Nice. Welcome to the Manchester Beatles Blue Show. How is everyone this fine, fine Thursday? Did you all do your, uh, your minutes of applause, clapping? Did indeed. Did. Fantastic. Absolutely. That's a good time. So how are we getting on today, chaps? We, have, we had a, a fantastic um, day on Saturday, didn't we, with, with the quiz. Had so oh, many positive, put so much positive reaction from it. We're going to have to do another one of them, you know. We just need to try and think up more questions. That's the only problem. I think we definitely yeah. do another one. Maybe try and do a junior blue one or something. Do oh, questions from the last one. That's a couple really of years or something. Idea. Yeah. Junior blue would be good. Yes. To tie in from our Wembley chat and our private ones, here's one quiz question for you. Oh, go since, on. the, since the formation and the build, well, you should say rebuild of the new Wembley, how many times has City played at Wembley, bearing in mind we had one Community Community Shield game at Villa Park? Right, so that how question, many times, yeah. how, many that how many times in all competitions have City played at the new Wembley since the new Wembley's been built? I'm going to go for 11. Nope. Way off, actually. <laughs> it's got to be in the 20s because Tottenham Hotspur were playing there for a while. Nope, not in the 20s. Oh, got to be more than that, then, easy. Nah. 18 not... times. Eight, that 18 it? times City have played at Wembley, including the league games against Spurs. Oh, that doesn't count, does it? <laughs> All competitions. <laughs> how, how, many without, how many without playing for Spurs? Uh, it will be 16 for Spurs. Uh, how many years was Spurs at Wembley? Was it one and a half? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah but we about, played the about Champions 16. League. Well, about 16, wasn't it? Crikey. God, I bet I've been to about 80% of them. I know I didn't go to um, the, the game. Was it, what was the game we played at Villa? It was the Community Shield, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't go to that. I think I've been to the vast majority of them. I've still got programmes everywhere just gathering dust. <laughs> programs, programs and tickets. So we had a good week so far. Yeah, yeah. Dave, yeah, right. you made a fantastic point about doing the Man City Lifetime Eleven. Yeah, this is something I'm not. Put, I need. I need some serious time to go through this because I'm 37 and I, I, I'm thinking to myself. I went for a run this morning. Um, stayed keep kept, kept my distance from everybody, obviously, and I was thinking through. My, my team, and then I thought to myself, oh, I've got to put him in, but I've got to put him in. The, 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 the problem with this is, is what formation can we choose? If you give me a set of formation, I'll give you 11 players. Because I, when it came to the strikers, I thought to myself, right, well, we've got to have Sergio, obviously. I want Anelka in there. I want Uwe Rosler in there. You know, what, what happens? Where, where, do, where, where, do we, where does this stop? So I, I thought to myself, right, okay, if we go for a, a um, four, four, standard 4-4-2, four, four, then there's midfielders there. We've got King Kladzi, right? We've got King Kladzi, we've got Kevin De Bruyne, we've got Yaya, we've got Fernandinho. Honestly, it's such a hard... It's put your all-time City 11. Do you want to lead the... Have you got yours written down, Dave? I've got I've got mine right here. So I'll Come I'll on. send you as well. I don't When we post this to Facebook, I don't know whether we can actually do a screenshot of it or whatever, but uh, okay. So I've gone with it's it's a good question about formation because I've gone basically with something that basically Guardiola's template of having that defensive midfielder and then after that it's all essentially free reign and yeah. you know just having creative players. So uh, I in goal I'm a very very big fan of Tony Coton. Uh, oh, Tony Coton. Tony Coton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolute great goalkeeper, Mr. Reliable, just unfortunate in his time at City, you know. Um, I think it was David Seaman who was probably the keeper ahead of him uh, for England. Didn't really get any England caps, but fully deserved them. I mean, he, he didn't really put a foot wrong for City. He didn't He didn't make errors. Uh, he was just a wonderful keeper and um, probably a bit underappreciated, to be honest. And Agreed. At the time he played for City too. He probably could have played for a bigger club, and you know, I'm I'm just being totally honest there that, you know, we weren't great then, uh, early '90s. So he probably could have played for an even bigger team, and then maybe got some England caps. Um, I'm showing my age a bit, obviously, but I've got a uh, Pierce uh, at left back. I know we only got him towards the end of his career, but if you look at Stuart Pierce's career anyway, what a wonderful uh, player he was. Uh, I've got 
uh, Vincent Company, uh, my first central defender. And then I've got uh, Mr. Dave Watson as my Dave other Watson. central defender. Dave Watson, past him. Yeah, yeah. Dave Watson, what a great player, you know. I was with us for about four years, uh, but, you know, one of the best central defenders for England overall. I think he got 61 caps or something like that for England overall. Uh, and because I literally can't leave him out, and um, one of was going to be arguably City's greatest ever player, uh, Paul Lake, I've put at right back. Right back, I know, yeah. I know, again, not his preferred position, but... You speak to anyone about Paul Lake, he was that good, he could play anywhere. You could put him in goal and he would have had a good game. That's how good he was. Um, I've got uh, Fernandinho, sent, uh, uh, defensive midfielder, protecting that back four. Um, I mean, you look at that back four as well. Stuart Pearce, Watson in particular, absolute hard nuts. Uh, you've got Fernandinho in there as well. Nothing's getting past them. Uh, then I've gone for um, Silva uh, and Conclazi uh, in my midfield, uh, creative. And then I've put uh, KDB in there as well in my midfield, but playing him a little bit further forward. Uh, and then my strike force is uh, Sergio Aguero and the one and only George Weyer, who, again, I know only played for us for seven years. Mm -hmm. But if you look at George Weyer's career and how many goals he scored for some wonderful clubs, uh, just um, again, I couldn't leave him out. I'm even leaving out Uwe Rossler, who is my favourite player of all time for City. But uh, yeah, oh. that team, Coton, Pierce, Company, Watson, Lake, Fernandinho, uh, Merlin, Pinky, uh, De Bruyne, Aguero and George Weyer. I'm struggling here. Now, I'm struggling for goalkeeper. Because it's, it's, it's between... Uh, see, Joe Hart, for me, he was a goalkeeper when we started to win things and got success. So I've got a love for Joe, a lot of love for Joe Hart. Would Joe... I'm asking everyone here, would Joe Hart have been a better goalkeeper than Tony Coton? Yeah. Well, here's... Possibly, but here's the thing. Hart was, is and was prone to an error. Tony Coton never was. And that, for me, is the difference. Mm. But he wasn't uh, you know, just ridiculous saves that Coton was making. He was just reliable all the time. You could depend on him that he wasn't going to make stupid mistakes. And that's why I put. That's why I went for Coton. That's why I didn't really go for Edison or Hart, simply because they've gotten a mistake in them. I never see Tony Coton in the five years he was with us make a mistake. You know, Would Tony I... Cotton have been able to cope with modern football, though? Because it was he was quite an old-fashioned kind of goalkeeper in my mind, Tony Cotton. Um, he seemed like if you look at the, some of the greats, like Bruce Grobbler, I can't imagine they'd managed to cope because the, the the ball itself has changed so much over the years. I don't know whether he'd be able to cope with the unpredictability of that and the increased skill level as well that that goes on these days. Hmm. Just wonder you what your know. opinion on that on that is, you know, with with Cole. I, I, I know I know what you mean by that, but I I think to myself, I'm, I'm looking at our goalkeepers now. I'm I'm going to get shot at here from all angles, but when when we signed Peter Schmeichel, <laughs> I was really happy because one, it was a bit of shit hours over United, which is always good at the best of times. But it was so good to watch him as a, as a, as a fan for once, rather than absolutely hating him. What a goalkeeper he was in his time. Yeah. He, he must be in the top five all-time goalkeepers for the, for the league. Easy. Without question. He's, he's, in my top, he's in my top 11 for the City team. Is he really? Yeah. He was my first goal. Because I, I looked at it on um, on their entire career, not just what they did at City. I mean, yeah. like Dave did with George Weyer, that goal he scored against Milan, where he positioned himself on a defensive corner at the back of the box. And he just waited for it, took it in one stride, full length of pitch and scored. It's unbelievable. So I looked at what players have done out, you know, during the career. And Peter Schmeichel, out of, I would say there's five top class Premier League goalkeepers. Um, I'd say Joe Hart, Jaskalainen, Given, Seaman and Schmeichel. And I would put Schmeichel at the top of that list any day. What he did at United, he could score goals. 
he commanded an area. I mean, I know we've got a, a keeper now at City who can who scored goals for us. You know, Kyle Walker, he's done all right in that. But everything he did, even when he was at City, he he, he was just so dominant and so so commanding of the box. Very very little ever got past him. Whether he was at United, was it? Porto or Sporting that sporting he went to in Lisbon Portugal. And then Villa and then us, yeah. yeah. He had such a great career. And he, even Casper. I was gutted when we got rid of Casper Schmeichel. Yeah. I'd have much prefer I, I was gutted when um when he was dropped in favour of Joe Hart, because I thought Schmeichel he came into the team as like third choice keeper after a couple of injuries. And the start of that season he kept some clean sheets, he saved a penalty against Van Persie. He was he was a real promising young talent, and then we sold him to Leicester, and he's now one of the best goalkeepers in the Premier League. I was gutted. Yeah. See, I'm I'm, I'm struggling here. I'm, I'm putting my I put I'm putting my my team together. I'm talking to you, and I've got 13 players. But where where, where, <laughs> where I'm struggling is so my my back four is a back three at the minute. So I need I need a left back, and all I can think of is Danny Tiato. But he, he, there must be better left backs than Danny Tiato, and I really want to put him in. So I've got I've got a Zabaleta, Vincent Company, and Distan, because Distan and Company together would be in their pomp would be unbeatable. I think. Yeah, nice player. Then, That's what I've got. Who's got that? Is that you, Steve? The, the, um, the yeah, yeah, I got Zabba, I got Zabba, Company, Distan, Kolarov. Kolarov's a really good shout, actually. Yeah. He's, his name's down. Yeah, Kolarov's the real... What about Kalishi? I always preferred Kolarov over Kalishi just because of how good he was going forward. Yeah, his, his and set, set pieces. pieces and crossing, yeah, was unreal. Hey, who have you got in goal? <laughs> I said it one man for me, mate. Edison. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I know we've had great keepers and I understand, and but it, this guy has won everything apart from the Champions League. So, I know, we, like, I know like Dave was saying, he is prone to mistakes, but he also has saved our asses a lot of times as well. Hopefully. Um, Hopefully for me, Steve, I, it's very, very close between those yeah, two. Yeah, that's what I mean. I think, I think obviously, I've, he's probably one of the keepers I've seen the most, apart from probably Hart. Um, but if for me, he is a love child of mine, so I, I wouldn't have anyone ahead of him. <laughs> well, I've gone for 4 2 3 1 in my formation. I've already jotted this down quickly. I haven't really sort of had a, put a proper thought process into it. But I've got Fernandinho <laughs> and De Jong in front of the defence. De Jong? Oh, De Jong. <laughs> See, oh, I, like... <laughs> I was the same way. See, I almost put in De Jong instead oh, of Fernandinho no. because I, I, just... I love De Jong. I think those two, uh, those two in front of that defence. I mean, especially De Jong, he, he went taking no shit from no one, was he? Um, uh, it, it's difficult food. because uh, uh, there's so many, and then the three in front I've got at the moment. I'm only jotting down. I've got Tevez, KDB, and Silva. Oh, David. Who was that? Then fucking hell, Tevez. Tevez oh, this is making me mad, <laughs> and then, um, I love this. See, I, I really, I really, I really like Gota. So, uh, but I've, I've gone, I've gone with Aguero. <laughs> my, my, right, my, That's my you just had another hit in my midfield. So at the minute, for my defence, I've got Kolarov, mm-hmm. and I need to work out which is which one I like out of those two. The Stan Vincent Company Zaba. I'm happy with those three. My my midfield at the minute is you've just added De Jong on there, so I've got Kinkadze, Yaya, <laughs> Kevin De Bruyne, David Silva, Fernandinho, and De Jong. How how do I get rid of two players like that? <laughs> who were the one? Who were the? I mean, who? I looked at this as who did I just enjoy watching more than, more than anyone else? Yeah, and that's the way I looked at it. I okay, that makes it a bit easier then. That, in that case, it's. Kinkadze, Yaya, Kevin De Bruyne and David Silva. That makes it much easier because Fernandinho and De Jong, brilliant defensive midfielders, but I enjoy, I enjoy watching them four more than De Bruyne and Fernandinho, but that's a really brutal 
way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, could win a ball as well. He wasn't just a, an attacking player. Yeah, yeah, could win yeah, the ball. Yeah. Mr. Choo Choo Train, he can be my defensive midfielder <laughs> in, this, in this. Exactly. Line up, but I've just got rid of De Jong and Fernandinho, just like that. That that really makes me a bit sick. I've got a picture of Fernandinho on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> I, What's he wearing? I really like <laughs> nothing. nothing but a cheeky smile. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, let's, let's move on to... So, what's... Um, Dave, remind me who, who, who's in your midfield. Uh, my midfield is, so, uh, Fernandinho, defensive mid. Uh, but then I've got uh, Merlin, Kinkladze, uh and KDB. Okay. I'm just going for ultimate creativity. And then if they get past those three creative <laughs> players, then Fernandinho's there to, to mop everything up. Dan Fielding. Come on, pal. Who have you got? I've got two, two full teams. No, 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 no. So some of them have got the same team, but I can't decide which one I love more. <laughs> Hear me out. My ultimate all-time favorite city team. If and you I've put gone, in this, I'm going. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. I ain't got Duncan there either. Don't worry. He's, you know, he's <laughs> signed for a shot. But... Mate, you, you come back to me in five years, and you'll be in your yeah. team. Log the dunk. What, for the League Two team or something like that? It's, 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 <laughs> no, my, my, my all-time favourite. I've gone controversially for Edison. <clears throat> for me, it was a toss-up between him and Joe Hart, and even Shea Given was in there. Bearing in mind, I, I didn't start supporting City till 2004 onwards. Uh, my knowledge of the games lo- around that time is very limited. Um, so I've gone for Edison just to the whole way he plays football gone for Zabaleta Vincent Company, and I did originally have Laporte because of how important he was but I did change it to Distan and yeah that's interesting I might help you a little bit Tom I've gone for Clichy and it was a toss up between him and Kolarov myself but the only reason I went for Clichy is because he was more consistent over <laughs> A he's, more period yeah. of games. He's he's more just, just um, consistently defensive as well. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah, rather, yeah. I'd rather him be, and obviously call off was more offensive once. But I think my team's got I've got about twelve strikers at the minute, so I think we're good for attacking <laughs> options. Yeah, do you and know then, what? I'm going for cliche. You made my mind up there. It just John. depends how you want your team to play, isn't it? I suppose. Like I think <laughs> I, I went with I've attacking. Always, I've always been one that I, I'd like my midfielders to be pretty much all attacking and my defenders yeah. to be proper old traditional style defenders you know or I think Italian. that's why I put two holding in there to kind mm. of back me up a little bit <laughs> like <laughs> just um, <laughs> I mean just the thought of Distan and uh, company at the back that's what <laughs> I put you see you, you have some little terrier like Vardy try to get by them Distan wasn't going to let someone like him by would he he would have ploughed him down he wouldn't have had a chance on goal come on um, <laughs> but uh, my midfield, I've got uh, Dino in holding. I've got David Silva more centrally, but to the left. De Bruyne more centrally, but to the right. And Torre pushed up further than both of them too, because I think Torre would have been more lethal being pushed right up the pitch just because the way he just charges. Uh, and I know we're getting on to that, but the, the, the FA Cup semi-final and final in 2011 prove that you know it's what he had in his locker and I've gone for a front two of the two Argentinian maestros of Tevez and Aguero that's my all-time favorite one the other one that I, I, it, it's fighting against it and I'm not sure you lot will agree with this but I've gone for Joe Hart, Zabaleta, Company, Lescott, Clichy. Hang on slow so, so, so down start that again mate start that again. My, my other one yeah. is Joe Hart, yeah. Zabba, yeah. Company. Yeah. Lescott. Clichy. Nazri. David Silva. Aguero. Jeco. De Jong. And Balotelli. Good girl. And do you want to know why? That's the team that won the league. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I, I, I honest to God, I, I've always put it down to achievement. 2012 winning team. Yeah. Oh. I've got a couple of players no one's mentioned yet. Go on. I've got. I, I went for the four-two-three-one. Um, I got Schmeich, Peter Schmeichel in goal. 
Back four of Zabaleta, Company, Laporte and Kolarov. I picked Laporte over Distan just because I think Laporte is more of a... I, I can see him being City through and through for a long time. I can see him being here quite a while. I know Distan sort of wavered and left for Everton, but I, I, I like Laporte. I think he's going to be one for the for the long haul. I hope so. In my midfield, I've got Yaya and De Bruyne just in the two centre midfield roles. Left wing, David Silva. In the middle, King Cladzi. And on the right wing, I've got little Shawnee Wright Phillips. Oh. Everything he did, he did it at every single level. I remember the poor bugger scoring his first goal against Millwall away, and there was no one there in the crowd to cheer him on because we'd been banned from the ground. <laughs> so everything he did, he, he did it at all levels for City. He was blue through and through. He did it there's at so England. Many, so many teams you can have in there. It's, yeah. There's not, there's no, would no one have put Danny in there? No. Oh, did just, anyone even, even think it of it? It was him? the own goals, I think. Yeah, own goals, mate. <laughs> own goals. Put it this way I would have had Dunk in there rather than Dunny. Wow. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's not saying much in terms of own goals, but. <laughs> Honestly, you can imagine that those scenes when we. What have we gone through? Uh, I've, I've got four strikers at the minute. I've got Rosler, <laughs> Sergio, Anelka and Tevez. Let's take I a mean, couple of midfielders out and play all four. Yeah. Yeah. I would, seven up top. I would, <laughs> much as I love Rosler, I would I would take Rosler out, Tom. Yeah. yeah. It's got yeah, hard to leave Rosler out. Right 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 right. Sergio and Tevez. Those two. Those two would absolutely rip up rip up everything. Do you know? Who else I, I liked when he played for City was Gareth Barry. Yeah. Yeah. Work horse, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, Shifting. Also, yeah. also, no one's mentioned Dick off either. Oh, uh, you see, no. I, yeah. I, well, the problem, yeah. It was, the thing Premier is, League, I wasn't... I now Quinn and stuff. I used to like, like watching Now Quinn. But he's, he's, he's pissed me off in the last couple of years. So I've. I've, yeah. I've I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure he's devastated by that. I think sort of drafted in Milner as well. Mm. There's several teams we could have. Can we, can we all put our uh, all-star... All, all what we'll do is we'll put um, an all-star teams on, on the pages and we'll see which gets the most likes. All right, yeah. that's a great yeah. idea. We'll go from there. Should we do that? One goalkeeper that no one's mentioned, by the way, which I'm actually surprised about, is Nicky Weaver. Himmel. Nicky Weaver. Nicky Weaver was a hell of a keeper. He really was. Like he was playing first team for us at the age of nineteen. Basically, yeah. got us, you know, promoted he against got the Premier League, didn't he? Mm. Yeah, I mean, they thought he was going to be the next big, big thing. And I don't mean just City. I just mean generally in the football world. They thought Weaver had broken through so early that he was just going to be England keeper for the next. 20 yeah. years and it never quite happened for him but for us I thought he was a wonderful keeper That's well, I think it was the drink well. culture at City that got to him wasn't it he yeah. got in with the wrong crowd he ended up just becoming a bit of a piss artist and he did and when he came he back the second time round he was he was so overweight when he played for us again in the Premier League he was yeah. he was he wasn't the athletic cartwheeling keeper we had getting us promoted from our you know the lowest point he was he just looked like someone would be pulled in from the pub on a Friday night and said, right, there's the gloves, you're in goal tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a shame because I knew someone who actually used to go to the same childminder as him and he, apparently early in his career he was a striker. But I grew up and he was my hero. You know, he was the first the first goalkeeper shirt I had was the green the green capper one. And I yeah. had the number one. You know, I, used to, I had the blonde hair. I thought I was Weaver being 10 year old. That was That was me. But yeah, very. No good one's player. mentioned Seaman either. I've got Seaman as my uh, my bench keeper. Yeah, I think we need to do uh, bench. I think I think I think doing uh, the full eleven plus a bench. I think we need to draw a line yeah. on somewhere, don't we? Absolutely. <laughs> I think we so. only have one of your teams, Dan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, come on, you can't tell me an all-time favourite versus the 2012 winning team. That there is a difficult decision to be made. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. Right, we're moving on. We're moving on. We're moving on swiftly. 
Uh, Dan, do you have a Who Am I for us? I've got two of them if you want. Oh. One really hard and one very easy. Yeah, go on then. Let's have that. Who right. Am I? Right. We'll start with a hard one first. This guy started off at BK. That is the name of the club, BK initials. He then BK. went to Blackburn. V, 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 v for victory. No, Bravo. Bravo Kilo. And then okay. Blackburn Rovers. Motherwell. Yeah. I'm writing these down. Just two secs. I'm, I'm right. sending these to social media. Hang on a sec. I should highlight Blackburn Rovers and Motherwell he never played a game for, but he was there for a little while. Okay, okay. Then after Motherwell City. Yeah. Wrexham. Yeah. On loan. Tranmere. On loan. And then Silkborg. Exactly how it's pronounced. Then Motherwell again. Oh dear. And then pronouncing this one is a good one. Starnan. S T J A R N A N. And then finishing off at F H. So he didn't like the big name clubs. <laughs> right. Oh, mate. So we've got a bit of a Scottish Norwegian player there, haven't we? Yeah. Started off at Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for that one, it's a bit of a pain in the backside because he only played uh, add up to about maybe 110 games in his career maximum. Oh so I'll narrow it down. He's from the Faroe Islands. Um, yeah, I know who this is. Oh, oh. Yeah, hang on. This is going to do oh, Tom's oh, nothing. Was he a goalkeeper by any chance? Mm hmm. He was indeed. <sighs> Yeah, he'll get oh, it. In a I think I've got it. I know who this is. I must give me till the end. Yeah, right. It's the <laughs> easy yeah. one. The easy one. If none of you get this, then we might as well wrap this up. <laughs> right. This guy started off at Court. Another one I can't pronounce. Court Root. Court. K O R T R I J K. Jesus Christ, right. Then <laughs> Moose Cron. M O U S C R O N. You're making this up? No. <laughs> I wish I was, mate. <laughs> when, when I thought of him, I wish they'd gone to just. Well, I wish they'd gone to BK and FH. <laughs> yeah. Then after <laughs> Moose Cron. Then <laughs> <laughs> uh, Standard Liage, Liage, however you pronounce it. Then Schalke, Schalke again. Then back to Liège, Hamburg, <laughs> Al Ryan, A A L space R A double Y A N. Yeah, that's that Saudi Arabian team, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then City, that should have narrowed it down with Dave saying that now. Then City, then Plymouth. God. Then Sion, S I O N. What a career. And Nechi Baku, N E double T C H I space B A K U. And then ending up, an even easier name to pronounce. Oh, Go on. <laughs> last one, last one. Eintracht Assault. Eintracht. No. <laughs> No, believe me. I don't know how to <laughs> say I track. No, I have that I many. Love the <laughs> how many how many Bud Lights has he had? Yeah, it's only one. <laughs> uh, yeah, well that's enough to me actually. And that's been, yeah. that's spelled double E N D R A C H T space double A L S T. I watched him like to be honest. I I tell you what, I know who this is. And he scored a how, really, how, how you know really, how? really, really important goal for us. He did. I'm still getting, getting, I'm, I'm really still getting team names. Um, you want me to go back over them again? No, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to be honest. You give me an headache. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I can't even think who it is because I'm still going over the... <laughs> oh, my day. I'm going to have to phone my granddad. 
Yeah. 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 I. <laughs> oh, are we calling a day on them ones? Yeah, you've, you've done me there, mate, on both of them, to be honest. I'm That's still the, uh, the, Burger King. The, uh, the first one. First I one, yes. Yeah. can see his face. <laughs> I just can't remember his name. So give me, give me, give me, uh-huh. half, let me have a think. Right, okay, we're moving on. That's there's some really good ones then, pal. Put them onto social media, so they're going to get the answer. So would we like a bit of a debrief from the the quiz on Saturday? Mm-hmm. Well, chaps, we have a VAR moment. A VAR moment on our on our quiz competition uh, on on Twitter. We we announced that a Mister Andy A B C Coaching won the competition. However, to win the competition, you had to like our page, like Matthew Wood's page, who's the designer of the prints. And unfortunately, Andy ABC Coaching did not do that. So we need to redraw the competition for the print, for one of the prints. Hmm. Can you believe it? I so it. so yeah. what we're going to do... Unbelievable, is- Jeff. Yeah, pal, unbelievable. I know, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. unbelievable, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> so what we need to do yes, is yeah. I would like uh, Dave Yes Pick a number between 1 and 27 2 God I love you And that is <laughs> At Alex 8123 underscore He loves dogs and MCFC So there you go Alex if you're listening Probably not I bet you're not as long as you've liked all the pages and done everything, all the rules, you're going to win a nice print. So I'll get in touch with you on Twitter shortly and we'll go from there. Now, we were giving away a retro shirt. Are we ready to do that now? We are ready. Absolutely. Let's do so it. So what we did was we uh, were talking all the all the retweets from people. We're talking all the retweets off, off, off Facebook, all the way off, off Twitter. And we give an extra couple of points to people that could sort of part the competition and are um, uh, took part of the competition and give us scores. I've done the draw and the, the shirt of choice is going to Mr. Neil Jeb. So well done, Neil. We'll get in touch with well, you. Neil, we'll be able to well done, uh, get you one of the, the retro shirts sent out to you. Um, if, if you're watching this, Neil, if you drop us a message on Facebook we'll, uh, with your address and all your contact details, we'll get one sent out to you. Uh, I'm not too sure when it'll be sent out, obviously, with what's going on in the world at the moment with deliveries, but um, I seem to be getting stuff on Amazon, so it shouldn't take too long for you to uh, to get it through. So, yeah, well done. Well done to Neil. And that's that's all the prize is done, as long as uh, yeah. my, my mate over here, number two, is um, liking the other page as well. We shouldn't be back on here. So, yeah, I'm glad that's all done and dusted. Right. Has anyone seen any news and gossip you want to talk about before we jump into the, um, the, the semi-final game? Did you see the one I uh, posted on the page the other day about Deo Upamecano? No, please do. Please tell me. Yes. Um, if, you've, if you've seen on the Facebook, I've been doing a bit of a feed um, about analysing the positions we've got in the team and what we could strengthen, where we don't need to, etc. I had mentioned I think we should look at signing uh, Deo from Leipzig. And then the same day, it was Sky Sports announced that apparently City and United are looking to activate his release clause. He's approaching the last year of his contract and he has a £52.5 million release clause. There was no mention of Barcelona or Real Madrid, which I'm not surprised because if you look at their centre-backs that they've already got, they're, they're just swamped with talent. Um, so if, if, if Sky Sports sources are to be believed, it's between us and the rags. I can't understand why he'd not want to come to City. He's a young French lad playing alongside Laporte. Both of them will want to get into the French squad and impress. I think they will be a tremendous partnership. He's a big player. He's a bit of a, you know, he's a solid, tough lad. Good with his feet, good nice. with his head. Um, don't know what you guys think. He's not a dunk. He's, he's not quite that good. But... Oh, you, you, you've lost Steve straight away then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you didn't say Diaz then. Jeez, I'm still in. Right. right. Yeah, this, this dunk <laughs> thing is getting very personal now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he sounds good from what you say. Um, Dave, was this the one that I messaged you about the other day when you wanted my opinion? Yeah, I was. I mean, and Chris is right that I've. I've read that Real and Barca might have an interest in him, but I think City's and United's interest is maybe more 
more concrete right now. I was just making the point, as I have done for many, many months now on on our podcast, that should Barcelona or Real Madrid want this kind of talent, you know, and he's been touted as one of the best central defenders, you know, in his age group right now, you know, he's going to be, he's going to go places. And unfortunately, we're still at the stage where if Barca or Real show their interest and then the player knows that, Unfortunately, yeah. that these professional players are always going to want to play for Real or or Barca. They're not. Yeah. They're not going to want to play for City, unfortunately. And I wish that wasn't the case. Yeah. But we're still not quite there yet. Of the the very best talent in the world wanting to come and play for City. <laughs> what the draw is right now, in my opinion, for City is players wanting to play under Guardiola. And I posed the question the other day that. If we don't get one of the highest caliber managers in when Pep leaves, what's going to be the draw for coming to play for Manchester City? And it and it and it's just a question. So yeah, Steve, that I mean that's what you and I were talking about independently the other day, and you were saying you, you, kind of the same thing really. That are we going to get a Opamenko coming to play for City? I, I I was going to put it in the the chat, guys. But obviously, I think because we was on about something else, I think the that was flying through and I think it probably would have got missed anyway. But I, I basically just said what Dave said, but then you flip it on that. and I think we do have one of the best central defenders coming up in Garcia. So I think we kind of use that, but I think what I've, what I've heard um, is Diaz is really, really heavily linked. Um, I do have, I, I, like I said, I have a few mates and um, they have a lot to do with football. Obviously, I can't say too much, but Diaz is very heavily linked. Um, but on the flip side, I think we need to keep an eye out for Garcia. Um, and just, that's probably about it, really. Um, that's all that I've heard from, from that side. So- Martinez as a striker is a no-no, oh. by the way. Um, he Last doesn't. Of he, he, I think so. Or he's going to stay with Milan because he doesn't like English football. I think <laughs> he'll just. It, he does. It basic, basically, yeah. He, he doesn't want to get taken out left, right, and centre because obviously, like yep. in the Italian league, if you get yep. poked in, in the back and fall over, you get a foul. You know, so that difference of where you've got big centre halves like Tarkovsky and all that lot of Burnley are just going to kick shit out of you. You know what? That's his attitude. You know. Don't want him. Yeah. That's that. Um, I I heard that from a mate, and then it got t- touted on social media that he wasn't going to come. Um, and then yeah, it's just that I think Diaz is the, is actually the main the main one as well. So are we are we got all in it, are we all in agreement here because we've done a lot of chat about this on our little private messaging that we're only going to bring in a new central defender if we sell one or more of what we already have, i.e. Otamendi or or Stones. Like, is it going to be we sell Stones so we bring in Diaz or we sell Otamendi? You know, we bring in Upamenko or whatever it might be. Yeah think it's going to be that or do you think it's going to be more we're just actually going to bring another one in and, and not not let leave no. anyone that we already have i think you have a, a, a lot to do with the wages the wage structure um the thing with pep is he won't pay over the odds for wages i think that's what we find which i love i, I like that yeah i don't mm. want these players coming in i think that's what we was on about i think with paul pogba i think me and dan were having a Conversation about that when we Dan in the yeah in the we're having a bit of a disagreement uh, about what I just think like if you have someone come in of that caliber he's going to want the most money and then you're going to have the likes of KDB and all that lot thinking well hang on a minute I'm a better player than you why am I not on more money mm. and I think it just escalates down the team you know uh, Guerrero would be like well hang on even if I'm here for another two years I want to be on four hundred yeah. grand a week it's never going to happen is it. I don't. No, they're never going to think so. Yeah. See, Lewis Dunk come for twenty-seven <laughs> grand a week, guys. You know, love it. Uh, <laughs> can I just pick apart something <laughs> that you said, Dave? 
<laughs> love it. I'm so if you, I'm how, so how much do you want to think? Are we, are we selling to bring in more, or are we, or are we adding to what we already have? I, think, so, I, I hope so. I think we're selling, yeah. I think I think that, I think some players will come to a natural end of, yeah. of the, and we won't renew contracts. I, I honestly think. hope to sell both, to be honest, Otamendi and Stones. Otamendi, I think he should play his, the rest of his career gracefully somewhere that he can cope with. And Stones, he's, he's a shadow of a man. But just to pick apart something you said a minute ago, Dave, mm-hmm. you said that, we're, we're, and to some extent you agree, I agree, we're not the sort of club that can attract the world's best. You know, we're not in the same league as Barcelona or Real, you've got that prestige. To me, that's a good thing. You look at the 99 squad of United that won the treble. I hate, I don't like doing this, but with the exception of probably Beckham and Giggs, maybe Schmeichel, the rest of the team weren't world-class players, in my opinion. They couldn't have walked into any team in the world. You can't tell me Gary Neville was a world-class right-back who could have walked in at Real Madrid or Juventus. They were amazingly good players, who played well as a team. And that's what I think is the key to serious success. I think that's what City could could do. We've got the players, the, the good players, and you need a handful of world-class ones. I think Diaz is a f- tremendous player. Yeah. And I think Upamenko will be a tremendous player. They're both less than £55 million each, the same as Laporte. We don't need to be spending £80 million here and £70 million there on the likes of Van Dijk or Maguire. And if you sell, I, I, I reckon Otamendi could fetch 20 million in today's market. Mm. He's got a couple of years left on him. And I reckon Stones, we could probably get 30 million for. If you sell those two, that's 50 million. You can bring Diaz and Upamenko for about 50 odd million between the two of them after you've sold players. Yeah. Do, do you think, so, though, with that United team of 99, that they had a lot of leaders and we are. The thing is with us now is we're losing those leaders quite rapidly and we've now got to go and try and find new leaders to keep this team together. Because if we go and buy a load of new players again, it's like restarting and you've got to find the new leaders and, and stuff like that. You know, we, we've lost heart. We've lost company. David Silva's going. Fernandes, we don't know how much he's going to be playing next season. Aguero is going to be going. You're losing that spine, and now we've got to find players to come in and fit that. So surely you you need to be looking at I don't know now someone at KDB to step up. You need to be looking. I don't think we need to get rid of Stones though. No. I I it, think the United has... team in '99 had had two leaders. It had Ferguson and it had Keane, but then I think the rest of the players were. United through and through. You look at Neville, Scholes, Giggs, Beckham. They wanted to play the, for the club. They absolutely Did loved Michael the Man United. Leader? Sorry? Michael had to have been a leader, though, surely. Yeah, yeah. 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 From, oh, yeah. Sorry. yeah from the back, yeah. Michael. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stan, leader. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Brilliant player um, as well. He would have got into any team, Stan. I don't, I don't think Scholes was a quiet player by any means of the Imagination. Well, I, don't, I don't think, I think they had, KDB I is think, particularly a leader. I think he's a, he's like Scholes was. I think you don't need to give him the armband. I think he's one of them. He'll just he'll pick players apart regardless of whether he's a captain. I don't but, think he needs to be the but, captain. With these with these guys leaving now, who are you who are you putting the armband on now? Someone name me one on player current, on the team that is a on pure the current it, squad that we've got. Leader. I'd have Laporte. I was well, yeah. On the current squad that we've got, and not including anyone we might buy, I would say Laporte, with a mind to it, either being him full time, mm. or possibly looking at Garcia, because even Taylor Howard Bellis, he's captained England already. He's you know, never, never going to captain City, mate. Mate, you, you got you got you got to be looking here of like, you know, we have no way near a captain of company. That's what you're looking at now, no. Laporte. You look at his injuries, Laporte injuries. Do you want a captain that is just, well? You know, Vinny's had a fair few injuries, though, mate. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, but what? Yeah, but what was he like off the pitch, though? I can't see Laporte being like what company was off the pitch. 
always yes, wrong. Andrew. You know, I can't, what? No, too quiet. There's we have no really? one. Yeah. I think I think I think, I think like, the thing the thing is with this is it's the players that decide who the captain is, isn't it? Mm. If, if you're if you're in the if you're a player in that dressing room, who who are the pick three senior players? Steve, pick three senior players that you're the captain. Uh, that we've got right now. Right now, who who are the top three senior players? You got Kevin De Bruyne. You got Kevin Fernand, De Bruyne. Aguero. <laughs> Aguero. Yeah, and Fernandinho. Yeah. So it's between... Sergio's never going to get the armband. It's going to be between Fernandinho and Kevin De Bruyne for next season, isn't it? Is, yeah. is, is, Kevin, is, is Fernandinho finished this season or next season? Next, next season. Next season. Yeah. Next. So next year, Fernandinho will be the captain for City next year. No. In my, in my opinion. I just think... I'd, we just don't have that... You look at the captains of other teams and I... And I think we just don't have anyone like it now. We don't have leaders across the board either, do we? We don't have we don't no. have a leader in goal. We don't have a leader in defence. Don't have a leader in. Um, no. Yeah, I think it comes down. I think we need. Well, I don't know. I really don't know. There's no really good English leaders, is there? That you can come in and and get. I think that's where it stems from. Maybe it's just it's, age is the problem. We yeah. have quite a think, young squad, apart from the likes of yeah. Fernandinho and Aguero. They are quite a young squad. And I remember when Company joined City, I'd have never looked at him and thought, he's future captain. No. Because we had this oh, done I, and done. You know, I, I really it. did. Yeah. He, he was a good player. But I think since he got the armband, he, he matured overnight and he became the, yeah. the legend that he is. Like, I, but then, I think there's but a then couple of City who could do that. But then he came in and we had big, strong leaders in the team. You know, when Company was around, he was really only the main leader, wasn't he? You know, now I don't think we have anyone to lead that team. Company came in, we had two, three, four players that were leaders, you know, now. And then company was the main leader. That's why I think, you know, even when he was injured and I understand why Dan said that, but he was still, you could still hear him in those changing rooms and off the pitch. And The the thing with company is that, You've got to think he is football aside a one-off type era player. I can't remember a, a, a player for any club in the past decade that has done the things off the pitch that company has done. I don't think it's so much that he's just a leader for a football club. I think it, it's the whole reminiscence of the club look up to him as the human that everyone wants to be. And I think even if he was to stay on for another five years, say, or even just the background stuff, if we were to get the next Vincent Company captain style player, we'd always still look to Vinny as the main leader because it's just the type of person he is. I think now Vinny's left, no matter who comes in, we're never going to look at it for the next five, six years at least that he is the captain that we want unless he steps up to the style Vinny does. And I don't think any other player will. No, no, yeah. no, I, I totally agree. But I think now, like, you got a, a captain has to deal with the likes of Benjamin Mendy and all that who like to have yeah. a little bit of a piss around and things like that, you know. So there's a little bit more because we have got a younger squad. You need to keep them in, you need to keep them in check. And I think that comes down to, I think no one pissed around when Vinny was, was around. Um, you know, but then we would like, we had him, we had Zabaleta, who was also. You know, very well respected. Um, so it's, it's a really difficult one. Who's going to be it next season? I yeah, can't. So they could argue, you could argue though that they don't really. I mean, you were saying nobody pissed around when Vinny was there. Look at the antics Balotelli got up to, throwing darts at youth players, and Mika Richards was known for being a proper comedian. But I've heard recently a couple of times the modern captain is just the man who says heads or tails. Yeah. I honestly don't think Pep Guardiola is going to let anyone dick around or, you know, be an arsehole in the dressing room. I think he's the he's the, the serious top whack. So if we have to hang fire for the next four or five years and just settle with a, a coin toss bloke until we can establish, like, if Diaz what comes is, in, if, what Paul, if Pep leaves. Let's start looking to wrap this up now. I think, I think from the... Um, 
I think the long and short of it is it's either going to be it's either going to be Fernandinho or De Bruyne. I think the likelihood of De Bruyne is very high on the list, but also with Fernandinho in his last year being one of the senior players, I think he's got to be up there as well. I think we could talk about this all night, couldn't we? But we've got something else yeah. to move on to, haven't we? Is anyone happy with that? Yeah. 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 Fabulous. Yeah, right. So today being a a celebration from the, the City victory over United in the semi-final at Wembley. Did, did any of you guys go to that? Yes. What a day. What a day. Uh, my, my, it's, it's one of the only final, semi-finals I've done. A lot of times I've been to Wembley when I've been absolutely, I don't know I was going to swear then, I was I was drunk when I got out of the car, I was drunk when I got back <laughs> I fell asleep and, and I, I woke up, I fell falling asleep in the car park at Wembley and I woke up in Manchester. <laughs> and it was really one of the best football games I've ever been to in my life. And I, I'll, I'll never remember this game so much as I went with my, uh, my family, as usual, one of my cousins came, and at half-time we went down to the bar expect, not getting, expecting to get served. And it was an open bar, and, it was, and the, the bar was free, it was ready to go in. So we bought five pints, so me and my cousin, we drank five pints each. Bear in mind, we were already drunk beforehand. I missed the first five minutes of the second half I turned round only to see Yaya Torre running through on goal and scoring honestly on a, and after that I don't remember much it was absolutely <laughs> <hilarious. laughs> but let's let, let's talk about the game shall we um has everyone had a, had a managed to have a, have a look at the uh, the highlights of from, from the game yeah yeah absolutely. yeah can I just mention before we start on the game please do uh, I, I, there's two points I thought I was drunk when I got to the ground I hadn't had a drink all day but I'm not joking. I was literally on the back row, right at the top, and I remember my seat number was two six seven. Sorry, two six nine. And I'm going along, and it's like we had two tickets: two six nine and two seventy. So it was like two six seven, two six eight, two six nine, two six eight. There was two bloody seat numbers with the exact same number, and I thought this is the home of English football. They can't even get the seats right. <laughs> so, the one thing I re- I'll always remember from that day. How drunk were you? I'd not had anything. I couldn't afford the drinks down there. It was like nine quid just for a portion. <laughs> and, uh, and I kicked myself to this day. I spent I spent about twenty oh. in a round for myself. Yeah, ridiculous. And, I, and at the time, I was still trying to scrimp and save for my season ticket the following season, <laughs> which I, I said at the weekend I missed out on. But I'll I'll never forget as the teams came out, just seeing all that. I think it was like thirty five thousand City fans, wasn't there? That we took that pause now. That mm. Poznan at the start. start. My God, I thought the arch was going to cave in. Oh, it's phenomenal. Unbelievable. Phenomenal. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to play some highlights here just to remind myself. I watched it before. We've got five minutes worth of highlights here on the the, um, the, the FA Cup, the Eon website. And the, the, as soon as the teams are coming out, you see Vincent Company as usual jump in the air. And the Poznan is absolutely rocking the end. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. But we need to remember how lucky we were not to be a goal or two down in the first couple of minutes because Berbatov and Joe Hart, you know, Joe Hart makes his save. He has two opportunities, doesn't he, Berbatov, in the first couple of minutes. And how we, honestly, how we didn't. How he didn't score those those chances. But Berbatov was a fantastic striker, wasn't he? What a touch and a finish. Yeah. But when Nanny crossed that second ball in and then Berbatov sliding in, I'm thinking, I looked at me dad, I was like, I can't believe he's not scored that. I genuinely can't believe he's not scored that. Yeah. See, that's, all, that's the thing I remember the game from. It was a game of absolute great saves. There were three world-class saves there, two by Hart and one by Van der Sar. And it was just, it wasn't an end to end game, but the play and the shots that were taken were out of this world. And the saves highlighted again how good it was. You know, it was, that's, that's one of the main things I remember it by. Absolutely. And it's funny yeah. watching this game back with, and watching David Silver with pace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. And hair. And hair. Yeah. yeah. Bless him. He's hair back now, ain't he? But yeah. But it's, uh, it's funny to watch, isn't it? And it, it makes me, because Paul Scholes, what a brilliant player Paul Scholes was. He could pass yeah. around us uh, with, without even looking. It, but, you know, he just seemed to, uh, which, which, everything just went, went for us, I think, that day. I, I think just, it, I'm always nervous watching City. But look at David Silva now. Crikey, he was quick, wasn't he? I forget about that. And when, uh, when Barry hit the, uh, I was at the opposite side of when, so I, I, I was watching, so, I, I, yeah, I think that's right. So I, where I, where I sat, the players came out. So I was watching the United 
yeah, United on my right hand side, and Barry hit the side netting, and I thought it had gone in. I don't know. Do you remember that when he so he just he yeah. sort of and John O'Shea, which, which, which is he, yeah, you what mate? It, it was really close. I mean, keeper had it covered, but for, I know what you mean from where we were sat. The side net and rattled. Yeah, you did. It, it literally went just one side of the post. And all the was that, uh, the, yeah. oh. was that the one where he was facing away from the goal, swung round yeah, the to his left. He's yeah, one yeah. on his volley. Yeah, half volley. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when Balotelli miscontrolled it as, as the cross yeah. came in from David yeah. Silva. Unbelievable. Is it, um... oh, Les Scott's volley was good as well. The, uh, yeah. Unmarked, and he just sort of... It was the proper John Smith of it. He was only about nine yards out. And I mean, yeah, he kind of reminded me a bit of David James. again. You know, when he, uh, he went up front and he went for the shot. Yes. And yeah, it. Yeah. it was that kind of... What the hell was that? Was it a half volley? Was it a volley, wasn't it? Yeah, we had, on the, on we the full had, volley. Yeah. That's right, because here's the Mario Balotelli shot beforehand, and he stung Van der Sar's hands from about 50 yards. Yeah, and we watched yeah. it. I tell you what, Van der Sar was a cracking keeper, wasn't he? Mm, he was, world key. class. Mm-hmm. At Juventus. Yeah, I think yeah. he still holds the record, doesn't he, for most consecutive clean sheets in the Premier League. I think it was like 11 or 12 games. Yeah, I think so. He, he, I mean, he was a tremendous keeper. And he, he managed to put, he managed to get this this he managed to hit the ball away. Balotelli's goal the ball was dipping into the goal, and as the ball comes in, Van der Sar just hits it perfectly off his off yeah. his wrist and ricochets it. I tell you what, he's got some great. This is this is we need a tall goalkeeper city to replace um, Bravo as our number two. I do I do like a tall goalkeeper. Yeah, Pantillum on back. Yeah, that's it. And then oh that that <laughs> that vol- that volume less got crikey. Yeah, if he had his head over that, that was flying into the back of the net. You could see it going through his head. He's like, I'm going to do it. What do I do? What do I do? going to be an absolute it's screamer. Proper, yeah, it's a proper, <laughs> proper defender's shot. It looked like my six-year-old <laughs> kicks the ball in the, in the garden. He'd proper like, I don't know what to do, what to do. Oh, panic. Panic. Yeah. It on. But I tell you, if we would have scored that, he would have been a hero. Yeah, if. <laughs> and, uh, the player that crossed it in is the, the player we don't talk about very much, Adam Johnson. Uh, oh, what was <laughs> Ooh. No, move on, Lee boy. <laughs> Dad, uh, Dad, quick question. Yes. Was Johnson in your B team? Uh, uh, you had, no. I'm sure, I'm sure you, know. you had the team in your B team from the uh, semi final. <laughs> I, I, I had the I had the finishing team as my team. I think that oh, was really? the whole reason I stopped it. <laughs> Hang on. Let's go, Nazir. No, he never. He wasn't even on the bench that game. Never played. Yeah, right. Okay, we'll move quickly on, shall we, from that side? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Oh, crikey. Uh, but then, then, um, Captain Marvel has a, has a stinging shot from outside the bar. This is, this is all one way. So United have, have, have this traffic for about what, 10, 15 minutes, and then it's yeah. in more City. And we seem to be getting the ascendancy. And we, we, seem, to, we seem to play Mancini's way was... I don't know. It's hard. To, it's hard to describe, really. But we're very consistent in pressing and pressing forward. And we seem to, w- w- when Mancini was manager, we seem to have this this knack of just not letting up and keeping on the pressure and keeping on the pressure, which is mm-hmm. which is great to see. I, I love Mancini. I thought he was a fantastic manager for us. It was too. very, very patient football, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, it was all possession based. But if if you had to spend ten minutes passing it between sort of your back four and a couple of midfielders before finding that perfect forward pass, he'd be like, yeah, spend 10 minutes doing that. He was yeah. so patient. He never he never panicked. He never... Even when we, Aguero scored the, the 93-20 goal, he's cheering, but he's still got his hands in his pockets. He's running <laughs> my but he's like, I'm calm, yeah. I'm calm, I'm calm. Very you know, underrated, just Mancini. Yeah. yeah. Like, even by me, I'll hold my hands up. Even I underrated. Oh, this, this shot by Vincent Company was so close. It's on the, ed- it's on the edge of the D. And the ball, the ball comes in, and he hits it first time, and it whispers past Van der Par, Van der Par, Van der Sar's post. Van der Par. Van der Par. Van der Par. Van der on the bar. <laughs> and, he, and his technique is absolutely brilliant. Honestly, Vincent Company, you could tell he's a midfielder, couldn't you? The difference between his yeah. shot and Lescott. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's worlds apart. Absolutely worlds apart. We, we go into the second half now, and Ferdinand passes back to Van der Par again. <laughs> David Silva. Comedy of errors, wasn't oh, it? With the uh, yeah, yeah. defense, and it is at this point. Is at this point when I turn round 
on the on the stairs on the way back up. Absolutely, honestly, that that goal going in was one of the one of the single greatest football moments I've ever had at a, a stadium. Balotelli comes yeah. in, comes on all the players, nearly puts the backs out of three players. It's the first time he pre- really celebrated a goal at City because up until then it was just he scored a goal and just carried on. But I, <laughs> as soon as that goal went in, the poor bloke in front of me, he must have been back to his seat about twenty seconds from the bar. He oh, just really? got a fresh cup of coffee, and it went all over me. And luckily, because oh. Because it was proper London crap. It was like lukewarm puddle water. <laughs> so I didn't get burnt or anything, but I was drenched and my city shirt was stained. And oh. But no one cared. It was just no, yeah. grab the next person with a blue shirt and give them a cuddle because we were winning. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. The best the best thing about this this goal is we all know Yaya. Once he's got ahead of somebody, you're not stopping him. And he gets Vidic on the back foot. And as soon as that ball, that first touch by Yaya takes it past Vidic, I'm watching this now thinking this is only going in one direction. And he, and he, and he hits it off his ankle, doesn't it? Off the back of his yeah, foot. Yeah. Yaya, and it bounces so inch. This football is a massive game of inches and centimetres. And how he managed to get that under Van der Sar. And the best thing is Van der Sar's face. He knew as soon as Yaya kicked it. The ball was going to the back of the net. Van der Sar was like, oh, no, no. He just knew straight away. And then they, and they both went behind and they see the ball going to the back of the net. Fantastic. I could watch I could smile about this all day. <laughs> Fantastic. I don't think Yaya could have finished that any better than what he did. No. Good no. day. That's pretty much, for me, when everything changed for City. Yeah. When they... <sighs> when they realised that they could do this, and I think why Mancini is so important for City is, it's that mentality. We had good teams in the past, in the 90s and the early noughties and whatever, but we didn't have the right mentality. And it took that. Mancini just needs to get that confidence going and belief in the players. And yeah, what, what happened after that, it, it, that's... I hate to think what would have happened if we'd not got Mancini, to be honest. Because he's the one in, who absolutely instilled that winning mentality. To be honest. He got us on this run that we've had for the last decade. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree with you. I can't, I can't agree anymore. And Les got again, misses. How, how, he, how he didn't hit the, hit the target with his, his forehead? How, how did this game end 1 0? Well, I think as Dan pointed out, it's the keepers. Keep it yeah. finishing by Lescott, by the way. Yeah, not, not the greatest of finishing and, and the goalkeepers. But, I mean, it was a really good game, too, even, particularly for a neutral. Actually, a really good game of football. Yeah, uh, that's a really good shout. Yeah, no, that's a really good shout. The, um, the I, I'm a, oh, Nanny had a free kick, didn't he, on the outside of the area. And Joe, I think it was Joe Hart made the save. It was, it was a save, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, from Balotelli's deflection. That's... No, did he make a save? Balotelli helped that actually, though. I think it made it slightly easier for Joe Hart because of the positioning, but it it was quality save. Oh, it went off his head, didn't it? Of course it did. Yeah, Yeah, Balotelli's head. Oh god, that could have been disastrous. Absolutely disastrous. Yeah. Got to admit, I mean, I know Balotelli had his flaws, but got to say, in the big matches, he he really did. He he, loved it. Show for City. The the, yeah. the title winning game for, for City, he, he came off the bench and played phenomenal. It wasn't just the assist for Aguero, it's everything before that. And even in that semi final against United, he was on form all match. He, he wow. really was a quality player. And the wink yeah. at the end. Mm. That wink at the end is going to go down in yeah. absolute That fun. little scrap all falling out. Oh, brilliant. You, see, you just saw oh, lose his head. And it was oh, fantastic. But what was what was Paul Scholes doing? He doing what Paul Scholes does with that with that foul on uh, Zabba. Oh, he's just being a ginger knobhead, wasn't he? To be quite <laughs> frank. I mean, look at hey, that, that, that was almost as bad as Keane <laughs> on Harland. It was just malicious. He, the commentator says he was over the ball. He was about three and a half feet in the air. He wasn't mm. bothered with the ball. He just wanted to hurt someone because he knew the game was over. Yeah. I mean, I know you said people say he was a quality player. I I don't rate him nowhere near as highly as a lot of other people do. Paul Scholes, I think he was overrated. 
and I think he had such a nasty streak through him. You think Paul it wasn't, Scholes it wasn't overrated? a professional nasty streak? I think he was just a bit of an asshole. You can't tell me Paul Scholes is overrated. He's one of the best five defenders in the world. Ah, no, no, no. If you, if, again, ninety nine squad. He wouldn't have been able to walk into Real Madrid when you had the likes of Davids and Zinedine Zidane rule in the midfield. He, he was he was he was a good player. You can't deny, and he could pass a ball. But Kevin De Bruyne has already surpassed what he achieved as a as a midfielder mm. in terms of you know assists and goals. It's, it's just no, no. I think he was overrated yeah. mainly because he's English. <laughs> See well, for me, it, it, it's it's a very first time this is happening. I'm, I'm completely with Chris. I've never rated him as I, I, I rate him as a great player. He's a great player. As much as he has read, he's not world class. You put him in a Paul Scholes in his prime wow. in this United squad now, he won't make any difference. Wow. Are you serious? I'm, be, I'm being what serious. Paul wow. Scholes? Paul Scholes. Scholes. Are we on about, we yeah. on about the same player? Right? Yeah, that, yeah. No, not Lewis Dunk, don't worry. We're on about Paul Scholes now, but. Very Paul big surprise. Hey, 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 you can take the mick at me for Lewis Dunk, but Scholes, not a. No. In a t- Nah, that's wrong. Great, that's great someone like No, great, great player. Re- really, really good player in his prime, but not world class as people make he out. Could, uh, he could, he could walk into any team. Yeah, no. any. Not, not even in the nineties. If he'd have left United, like I said he couldn't have just gone into Juventus when they had the likes of Sadar playing there. And um, look at the world class players from like the France ninety eight and that era. You had some quality like Debaj. Yeah, was it Baggio? You had Seydorf, Zidane. All atta- all- yeah, but that's all attacking midfielders, though. He was a central midfielder, proper central well, midfielder, well, not attacking. They didn't have attacking midfield. It was 4-4-2 in those days. Yeah. But he couldn't have walked into Barcelona or... I mean, Chris, crazy. Just, can, I, just, can, I, can I just stop you there for just two minutes? Right. What, what, what we're going to do is we're going to do another pod about... Um, players that haven't played for City who we, who we thought were good. And we'll have, we'll have, a, we'll have a moment on Paul Scholes. But I just want to take... Have you ever heard of a lad called Luis Figo? Hey, yeah. Luis Figo, <laughs> Luis Figo said, I'm starstruck when I see Paul Scholes because you never see him on the pitch. You can't catch him. Zinedine Zidane. We, we know Zinedine Zidane, don't we? There is no yeah. doubt to me that Paul Scholes... Is still in a class of his own. He's almost in touch in what he does. I never tire of watching him play. You rarely come across a complete footballer, but Scholes is as close as you'll get. One of my regrets is, is that the opportunity to play alongside him has never presented itself in my career. If you if you and Dan are going to sit there and tell me Paul Scholes is underrated, I'd, I'd, I've genuinely... I've genuinely Overrated. Yeah. Can I just put out, you see that Zinedine Zidane quote, Look at how he's uh, his opinion on Gareth Bale. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've so seen that. You one. can't really yeah. take him for gospel because look at how he's been with Gareth Bale. Okay, how about, how, about, yeah, how, about, how, about the, how about the Brazilian Ronaldo, Paul Scholes? He's the phenomenon. Ronaldinho, I want to pass like him. Who taught him how to do that? Shall I go on? Well, Ronaldinho <laughs> is like the most <laughs> humble player. He's not going to say he's the best, and yeah. which he arguably was. I we need to I, we need to move this on because we I am it. shocked. But I will I will I will say this: one of the biggest mistakes every England manager who Skulls played under went wrong was they didn't build the team around him. They yeah. should have absolutely built the team around Skulls, and they did. Every no England manager. Yeah. Got the best Every, of, what, of what Paul Scholes could do for the England. Everyone team. raved about Scholes. Gerard, and Scholes is miles better than Gerard. Loads better. Ger- but Gerard, they were saying, could, yeah, he could get in the Real Madrid side, he could get in the Barca side easy, he could get into that Chelsea side when they got all the money. Nah, Scholes won things, first of all, a lot of things. And second of all, he could have, Scholes was, nah, I, I can't. He could have things. Yeah, but you're talking about a right back and a central midfielder. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just going off the point you said it. And yeah, he won a lot of things, but he was he was part of a he was a really good player in an incredible squad with 
the best manager the Premier League has seen. I mean, don't forget, Kalper Borski was in that team, you know, that won stuff. And he was Beckham, Bobbins. Beckham managed to get into that Real Madrid side, though. Was he miles Beckham. better than Scholes? Yeah. Was he yeah, miles yeah. better than Scholes? Um, David yeah, Beckham? I'd say. Are you in, in, David right? Beckham, he's one of those players. He could never take anybody on, but he could pick a pass out blindfolded from any... Uh, you can't Scholes. deny that. I don't like him. So but... good Scholes. I don't, no, I don't you're think he was as good. telling me Skulls can pick a pass. I certainly think Lampard was better than Skulls. No way. Oh, uh, oh, see, that, that's where I start to disagree. Have I, have I upset you now, Dad, as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, had, you had me for five minutes and then yeah. you just blew it out of the water. I'm still writing it in my diary, Dan, that we agreed on something for a minute. We are, we are going to be. Special day. Yeah, we could talk about this all day, and, and Chris, you'll still be wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> It's still in my diary when Dan agreed with me, so it's fine. Oh, um, you, you've got about 50 more to go before you meet Dave's target. <laughs> <laughs> right, lads, lads. I think we can all say that, as, as, De- as Dave rightly said, that, that moment from the semi-final has, has escalated City to, to, to where we are now. And coming on to players that... I, I, we're talking about Paul Scholes a lot and how how you know he's how he's done for United. I firmly believe Phil Foden will be our Paul Scholes. I firmly believe that if we if, when he, Phil Foden fully reaches potential, we will be building a team around Phil Foden, like we've done with you know some of the players that we've had. And I hope England see the same as well. And I'd like to think again, Southgate will be seeing that. And I'm just really looking forward to watching Phil Foden in an England shirt. I hope it's around Garcia as well. A Garcia, no, let's get Garcia in that starting lineup. Why, why not? I mean, I, I don't, I don't no. think, I don't think we're going to see it this season, are we? For obvious reasons. No, no, but I think if we can build a, a, you know, that's like a little spine there and then, isn't it? You know, the Garcia, then Foden, uh, and just sort of build from, build from that, you know, because yeah, uh, no, absolutely, I, that's, you know, for me, that that's. That's our that's our very very long term captain. You've heard me say before with Foden. I think if we play this right, he's going to be our Steven Gerrard. I I sincerely believe that. We need a captain for the next two to three years. Someone who can come in, bed Foden into a, a starting spot, be our best player. Then I think Foden really should be our our captain, and he should be captain for the next 10, 10 15 years. He's got everything to be the best captain. He's played for England at every level, uh, won the World Cup under-17s. He's already got a ton of medals, so he's going to have the respect of, of all these younger players who are coming up anyway that he already does. Mm-hmm. I, I would I would relish uh, Foden being captain by the age of 22, 23 yeah. for City. I, I think that would be the that, making I, of it. I was literally just about to ask if any of you thought he could make future captain at City because oh, I, I totally echo everything you've just said he is City through and, through and that's what you need yeah I was and just that about would to be say the that, dance point that we'll get to almost a, a Vincent company you know Vincent company loves Manchester to a degree so much not just because of the club he's married to a mank his kids are manks mm, he, yeah. he loves Manchester well mm. we've already got that with Foden he's you know, he's from Manchester, he's from Stockport. So he's already got that in this locker. He, he already knows what it means for this club already. I just think he's going to make a phenomenal captain for us one Stockport, day. Stockport, yeah, though, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Listen, uh, lads, we'll, we'll call this a night. Um, Dave, I who, love Who Jeff. am I? Say again? Who am I? Who am I? Thank oh, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good point. Right, so give us the... You don't need to give us the teams again. Because <laughs> no, 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 no. Are you no, sure no. I can run for him really quick for you? No, please, um, please. No, but well, I've got, I've got um, the fourth one. I think the first one. Ooh. Goalkeeper. Yeah. I now the, the the reason I got this is did did he not was he not in the squad when City went over to the Faroe Islands to play like a European game? Yeah. There's, there's something about it was Gunnarsson, wasn't it? A Gunnarsson, Gunnarsson. That's the one. Gunnar yeah. Nielsen. Gunnar Nielsen. Nielsen. That's the one. Yeah, was he not in the squad? He was. We played. Um, oh, what was that team? It was. It was weird because I know the city fans who went really struggled because the only people who could fly to the Faroe Islands 
had had to have special training and had already landed at the airport. So it was really hard to get there. It was really weird. And you were playing like On a farmers train. and professional kite flyers <laughs> and stuff. You know. Right. And the, the second one, Dan, uh, you, you stumped me a little bit. Oh, oh you're joking. One. That one should have been easier. Oh, stumped me. Go on, Adair. I think it's Emil Mapenza. Correct. Domingo. Oh, scored a, did, he, did he score a winner against, against United? So yeah. we had we were begging for points and we went to St James's Park and uh, and beat Newcastle and Penza got the goal and it, and it was a good goal but everyone was more shocked that you know we'd gone to a difficult ground and and got the points because God we needed mm-hmm. them. That's why I was saying before he scored a really really important goal for City and got us those three points because we were struggling that season. Was that under Pierce, yeah. that, when we uh, yeah. had our yeah, really, low, really yeah. crap Long home season Pierce. scoring goals? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Samaras and Karadi. The best Samaras. front two we've had in the past 20 years. Oh. Come on. Samaras. Oh, yeah, we'll up, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, man. Brilliant. Dave, we'll, we'll, do a, uh, we'll do a junior blue quiz. We'll put something together. Yeah. We'll well, should we do that in oh, there? Super, get that. some questions together from the last couple of seasons then to so make that a bit more... Uh, you know bit more. The best thing is I have got a 14-year-old son who oh. uh, doesn't have school for five months. And, um, yeah, I'll get him to put something together for us. Right, I'll get my six-year-old kid that's got absolutely no idea about City to, to come on as well. That should be a match. <laughs> Perfect. You will be a City fan. <laughs> and also... Well, we could get Moonchester on for that episode. Could get me ch- hey, let's try. Why not? Why not? You can't yeah, be else, can he? What I want to do as well in the future is do a David Silver appreciation show. Mm. Um, I think that would go down really, really well. I'm, I'm sure you guys would be up for something like that as well, wouldn't you? you know, like go best through some of it. Or best passes or something on those lines. We still we should make that like a black tie event and do like a proper awards for that because he has been a tremendous player and I'm I don't a- think he could... I don't think you could give him enough. I'm up for that. Do you know what? Do you know what? We'll do that. I'll buy a trophy and I'll yeah. send it to him. Done. Yeah. yeah. The Manchester is still cool. Are we still doing rewind games or not? Yeah, yeah. We'll do some in the future. Yeah, yeah. Have you got one in mind? I, I would like the um, the Leicester game where company scored. Done. Oh, how important it was. Yeah. Shout, yeah. Steve. That's the game. Next Thursday? Yeah. I, I, it literally just, just, just came. I, I thought as we was on about him, I just thought, do you know what? maybe appreciate him as well and have a look back at that game because that really turned the season for us, didn't it? Yeah, no, that, hey, listen, that's great for me. We'll do, we'll do that next 30 days. Great shout out, pal. But I'm uh, not saying the uh, Brighton game, Steve. You can have a look at about the, Dave, I can't talk about the other team that much, can I? <laughs> <laughs> I will want to. Their defence was bloody awful. <laughs> You still can't score, man. <laughs> right, anyway. Right, on that note, lads, <laughs> we'll see you very soon. Have a good night. All right. All Take the care, best, everybody. Boys. Stay, Stay safe, safe, boys. See you back here, Steve. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe.